Hello everyone and welcome to the May edition of the Brandwood CKC webinar series. For this webinar I'll be talking about um, some recent TJ initiatives to uh, open up uh, the use and leveraging of international approvals and regulatory activities to achieve uh, medicine approvals in Australia. Uh, my name is Rob Stringer and I'm Principal Consultant for Pharmaceuticals within Brandwood CKC and one of the founders of our company. So. In 2018, um, the TGA introduced a series of new activities to change some of the approaches they have made to the regulation of pharmaceutical products. And prior to this point, the TGA's activities for reviewing and approving prescription medicines were very much based on de novo applications and a de novo review of that data. So they would take apart the file, look at all the, the various sections, ask the questions as they saw fit, and, uh, and then issue an approval or rejection based on, on that evaluation. And they might have paid some attention to what was happening internationally, because they do adopt uh, a lot of the international guidances, and they do pay attention to certain regulators um, as a bit of a, a, a yardstick or, or a guide as to, to what the product international perspective is. But they really made their own sovereign authority decisions uh, on commercial uh, marketing approval. And the poster review uh, that was quite a broad based review in Australia of the way these regulations were, were managed by the TGA adopted much more of a, an open approach, uh, a we are the world approach, which allowed them to take advantage of international regulatory approvals um, to truncate evaluations in Australia. It also opened the door for some, some shared evaluation activities where they worked with like minded regulators to, uh, to divvy up the workload and also some very new initiatives where they're actually performing parallel evaluations but sharing their information as they go to uh, ensure everybody's on the same page and accelerate um, the overall um, activity. So lots of like minds working together. And so these pathways have had a significant impact uh, recently on approval timelines in Australia, which I'll cover to them. The first of the initiatives I want to talk about is the uh, way of leveraging the international approvals through the process of uh, comparable overseas regulators or core pathway. And what this sees is the TGA acknowledging the previous evaluations performed by like-minded regulators and they have a short list at the moment of the US, the European Union, Canada, UK, Japan, Singapore and Switzerland whereby the evaluations are truncated in Australia locally based on those international approvals. And critical to the operation of this process is the provision of unredacted comprehensive evaluation reports from these agencies to give the TGA the, uh, the additional information to allow them to do uh, an accelerated review. Now, there's a, quite a series of requirements for this process, which includes um, really a common data set across the board. So really your modules two to five need to be um, basically identical to uh, to the country that you're using as your reference country in the, in the core pathways. Uh, and the dossiers must also be in ECTD format uh, and not NICE. Now each of the different um, agencies have their own way of doing things to an extent. And so each country has a specific list of criteria that need to be met for you to be able to incorporate um, this particular application through the uh, comparable overseas regulator pathway. Now, if we look at the two different streams of leveraging these overseas approvals, there's an A and a B stream here. So the, the primary stream uh, with the most advantages is call A. And this is for applications which have been approved very recently by the international agency that you're referring to, so less than 12 months ago. A couple of other criteria that apply to, to sit in within this space, and that is you must have obviously the same medicine, but also the same supply chain. So the same manufacturers of the active substance and the finished product um, need to be incorporated into the dossier you're using for Australia, as well as the, the one that was evaluated by this international agency. And in this process, the TGO really only reviews the, the reports that you've received, the evaluation reports from the other agency, plus the module one, which is the Australian local territory specific elements, which is your labeling, your RMP. Um, beyond that, a full detailed assessment of the documentation is not redone de novo by the TGA. And this allows um, a much abbreviated uh, timeline here with a current target of 120 working days, which is significantly different from the routine evaluation process, which is 255 days. And what we're seeing is that this process is taking significantly less than 120 days as well in some cases. 
And there's also a, a secondary option, which is the core B pathway. And this is where you don't have the, uh, the approval of within the previous 12 months. So it can be, in theory, any time longer than that. And in here, uh, what this sees is a slightly more detailed evaluation, where it's still primarily focused on the international evaluation reports, but you're able to incorporate into the file any post-approval changes that were made to the file that you're referring to subsequent to that initial approval. And these might be new manufacturing sites or specification CMC changes, but could potentially also be clinical trial uh, data updates that will be incorporated into that. So that's the primary difference here. But the TJ has a, a longer target timeline here of 135 working days, but which you can still appreciate is still significantly longer than the routine 255. So it still gives excellent uh, value for money. So what does it lead to? Well, clearly faster approval based on those timelines. But for those who've been working for a long time, you'd understand at a head office level, it's a lot less technical questions. So because they're reviewing the evaluation reports where um, other agencies with a similar mindset have already reviewed thing and asked the questions and provide and the answers have already been provided they review that so you get a lot less questions and less drain on your, your global resources um, during the evaluation uh, points but also you tend to target a common set of uh, approval conditions you don't get that situation where the TGA insists on on one specification the US has another one Europe has another for your manufacturing processes it's much more conducive to having a uniform technical file coming forward and your labeling has a better chance of being the same as well although being part of the module one there are variations that um, that impact in there so that's the these new processes for leveraging international approvals shared evaluation process and this is uh, the ACSS or access some people call it which is uh, Australia Canada Singapore Switzerland a consortium there where basically what they do if you have simultaneous submission in those territories and it's included in the ACSS program the agencies will divvy up who's looking at what and they won't be all evaluating the same data so the TGA might say well look, we'll look after CMC Health Canada might look after the clinical and HSA in Singapore might look after the toxicology evaluation they'll all perform the evaluations as they would normally and then share their evaluation reports back to each each agency who will then make their own sovereign decisions based on the amalgam of those particular evaluation reports this um, means that you'd end up with a consolidated set of questions, which you would normally as part of the, the TGA process, uh, but you don't, it's an advantage to the regulators, they don't have to use resources across all of the areas to, um, to review all of the data. So you're relying on the evaluation being done somewhere else. That's more like a, a work share than necessarily uh, uh, an acceleration although it does tend to lead to an acceleration, as we'll see with some of the examples I put up later on. And at the end, a local decision is made, so they're not bound to all make the same decision, and those separate sovereign decisions may be based on the, their view of the overall data set and, uh, and the, the fitting in in the local territory. So in Australia, how does that product fit within the Australian uh, medical context? Says, um, does lead to faster approvals, although it doesn't officially, it's not listed as a particular target, but it does tend to lead to a faster approval process. And that's often because the types of products that might want to be considered in here uh, tend to be priority reviews, and I'll, I'll go to that a little bit later. You get a common set of technical questions in all the jurisdictions, which again has a beneficial impact on head office resources in terms of answering. Uh, and the aim is to get simultaneous international approvals. So uh, they endeavour to do that. Whether they achieve that to the day is, is, is yet to be proven, but that's the idea is that they, they aim to have approvals concurrently in the markets there for this shared evaluation process. Is this concept of parallel evaluations, and this is very much based on the Project Orbis uh, initiative the FDA has put forward for oncology molecules. And this is for high medical need, really breakthrough molecules where patient access is the imperative here. And what it involves is a parallel full evaluation by like-minded regulators. And that includes uh, Canada, Singapore, Switzerland, and the TGA, of course, uh, but with the initiative being driven by the FDA. So they're taking the lead on the evaluation activity here. Now in this process, each of the agencies uh, do perform their own review, but they're regularly in contact with the, uh, with the FDA and the other regulators they're regularly sharing where they're up to, where their evaluations are, talking about common issues they may well have found. So it's really like a collective think tank on the best way um, to, to 
view the information and to interpret the data as it's provided. Uh, that collaboration process is a little resource intensive um, and very much being driven by the FDA who have the resources to travel very quickly for products like this. You tend to find a lot of the other regulators may well be a little bit caught in the slipstream of, of FDA forging ahead there. And the concept at the end is you end up with simultaneous approvals. Now again, I'll, I'll put that in, uh, in uh, quotes there because it's not always achievable. And if you think some of the more recent ones, there's often some time lapse between the FDA approving first and then the other agencies might be days, weeks, or sometimes months behind just because their own internal systems might not quite be up to the uh, the level of, uh, of uh, acceleration that's possible through Project Orbis at the FDA. But it really leads to significant um, acceleration of activities. Now, those pathways, so you have your core pathway, the ACSS and, and the parallel evaluations through Project Orbis are on the backdrop of some additional pathways that were implemented by the TJ as part of this uh, change to their overall uh, management and, and uh, perspective when it comes down to prescription medicines. So simultaneously they improved these ideas of a priority evaluation and a provisional approval uh, pathway for these types of medicines as well. So priority evaluation didn't really exist um, prior to these changes to the legislation in Australia is really assigned by a set set of criteria that says certain medical conditions, so it obviously has to be serious, and that the product that you're proposing to be a priority review represents a big step forward um, in the treatment of that condition. And the way the process works there, different to the standard evaluation, which I have on the right of the slide here, is that it's you, everything is looked at immediately. Uh, the data is, is given a priority um, uh, focus from evaluations within the TGA. There are limited stop clocks, and uh, when a question is raised, it's sent to the, to the company. It's not waiting for a milestone. It's like an iterative process, question, answer, and they really don't want to have any, any delays uh, to, that might postpone the ultimate decision for that particular product. And they're really they're aiming for as soon as possible approvals, and some of them have been extremely fast. Uh, so less than six months, uh, and that's calendar months in, in some cases. So priority review is a, is a significant benefit. And we look at being able to participate in some of the international activities, such as uh, the Project Orbis or the ACSS, Having priority evaluation, you need that on top of um, participation in those shared processes so that the timelines can even come close to being aligned to some of those international activities overseas. TJ has also introduced a provisional approval pathway, which is an option for companies to explore when they have very promising early phase data and they haven't quite got their phase three pivotal data completed. So it's a way of opening patient access based on this very promising new information. And again, it's for serious medical conditions where the product appears to be a significant breakthrough. And the, the, there's a series of tight criteria to apply here, uh, but it, it basically means that you don't have to wait for your final data to be ready before you can, you can submit for evaluation. You need to have a plan though, so the clinical trial plan must be a, a approved as part of a provisional approval determination application. And these applications are also prioritised within the TGA because they do still sit in that high medical need area. So the contrasting that to the standard evaluation where you have very much um, all areas of the, of the dossier uh, evaluated, it's milestone driven, there's significant stock clocks associated with that that are part of the process, a 255 day um, a working day uh, target timeline in there. And, and often um, additional activities and, and stock clocks might be incorporated into that process depending on the specifics of the product itself. So that's the backdrop and uh, those processes that have been implemented need to be viewed through these particular um, elements and, uh, and prescription medicine pathways. These processes in action, how has it related to what the TGA's aims are here. So here's some examples of some relatively recently approved products. So one here, the Carbometrics product, uh, approved in 198 working days with one of the core pathways. So that's uh, significantly faster than 255, but um, not exactly setting the world on fire. Then we have uh, Vizinio, which is an ACSS review, which is 141 working days. So now we're getting to a, a dramatic drop in time. 
priority review application for Brunura by Marin's product there was in 129 working days. And more recently, the Calquins approval uh, via Project Board was 74 working days. So that is just in a different league to the 255 day pathway that the TGA would normally be following prior to these, the implementation of these new sections. So you can see, each product is going to have a different timeline because every project is different, but these are all representative significant changes to, to the pathway uh, timelines, which has a big impact on, on patients from an Australian perspective and also from businesses looking to expand um, the, their market jurisdictions and really leverage a lot of the work that they've done in these international territories. Approval in Australia. So looking at these new pathways, so your core, your shared evaluation, your parallel evaluation, getting you onto the market potentially in 75 or 100 working days, you get yourself onto the market in Australia, which is a significant um, commercial uh, target market. What it also can do is once you have a full approval in Australia, you're able to apply for um, a certificates of pharmaceutical product and leverage that approval in Australia to other territories within Southeast Asia. So you can potentially go for truncated evaluations and shortened time frames in other jurisdictions based on the Australian approval in that region, given the leadership role for Australia. So there really is a, a significant benefit um, across the board for companies to explore these options. And certainly we've seen a, a good willingness from the TJ to, to leverage these as well. So there's not, there's not appear to be in any internal resistance to, to following these processes, which is very, very powerful um, and, and really encouraging for, for patient access moving forward. So that's a very short summary of uh, all of these new pathways. So I've got the links to the TGA's description sections um, for what is required for each of these um, particular areas. And I encourage people to have a look at that. Got on that holding slide here at the end has our general contact page. So feel free to get in touch and I can respond to any questions that you have for me. Now, as I mentioned earlier, prior to the uh, the webinar being posted, I received some questions already, so I'll quickly just cover those off now for those who were so proactive in, uh, in, in coming forward. So firstly, one of the questions was um, how how difficult, what are the challenges in, in meeting some of these pathways to leverage these international processes? And I think the hardest barrier that exists is getting a hold of the unredacted evaluation reports from the territory you're trying to, to target. And the FDA is the biggest challenge there. So historically, uh, the FDA don't issue unredacted reports at all. Um, they have only the redacted ones that they post online. And this has meant that it was impossible to follow the FDA approach through any of these uh, the core pathways. Now that appears to be changing. And I know from talking to the TJ that they're actively working on um, getting access to those reports themselves directly. And through initiatives such as Project Orbis, it appears that some of those confidentiality provisions, which I believe were the driver behind the FDA not uh, issuing these types of reports, are being overcome. So I suggest that um, the core pathway is becoming more viable, particularly for some of these uh, work share arrangements where um, they are already sharing evaluations as they go forward. So that is one of the biggest challenges, but formally, um, there's still not yet anything on the TJ website that talks about how, if you aren't following something like Project Orbis, that you can use the core pathway um, based on a US approval. So that is still a challenge and a, and a working process. There's a question here as well about some of the newer treatments and how do these pathways align to those? So things like personalized medicine, um, custom-made implants and things like that. At this stage, uh, these pathways are very much uh, traditional prescription medicines. So uh, generics, uh, biotech products, uh, normal prescription small molecules that don't relate to some of the, the cellular therapies um, or biological therapies because there's a challenge there in that the international regulatory space is not quite so uniform. So at this stage, this is uh, combined to prescription medicines in, this, in the standard sense, and interestingly also complementary medicines, uh, but no other areas um, within that space are covered. And that might be coming, um, certainly in the medical device space, there's been a lot of harmonization, but at this stage, it's uh, the cellular therapies are not included in these, these criteria. 
Another question here was talking about, you know, can you use these pathways for prescription medicines or to own, for generic medicines, sorry, or does it only really relate to new chemical entities? Uh, now, you definitely can use these processes for generic products as well. So you might have a, a generic that's been approved by the MHRA in the UK, and if you can use get access to the evaluation reports for that and you can address the module one requirements then there's no reason why you can't utilize that pathway for an approval in Australia so but of course things like a project orbis are unlikely to be eligible there because it's not exactly a breakthrough medicine if it's a generic and similarly you won't get priority or provisional approval for a product um, if it's in a generic space because you can't meet the criteria of unmet medical need so that's a very quick response to some of the questions there. Feel free, as I said, to get in touch and uh, like to hear from you. Thank you.